Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real, a three minute or four minute or so podcast of films that I review. I know that I say it's a three or four minute review, but like, I, that's what I like to believe, you know what I'm saying? Of course, it ain't, it ain't, but maybe one day it'll get there. It just depends on the movie, man. Like, you like a movie so much, you're gonna like just talk your head off. And if you don't like it, well, you won't say too much of it. Anyways, I have a guest today. His name is E-Zone. You might know him from the We Don't Smoke the Same podcast, Dr. Green Thumb show. He is a connoisseur of cannabis. He is a food expert. He knows what he likes. He can recommend you almost anything. Not only that, he is an entrepreneur. He makes candles. He sells items, retro items, antiques, you name it beer related or not you'll find one thing at his website for sure and buy it e-zone welcome to the morning reel what's up ray thank you for having me back on on the solo episode i know right yeah i don't have my toxic wife here with me i can't wait for that one dude yeah if it ever happens it will <laughs> it will it's just you know gotta get his head of it out of his ass man yeah man he just <laughs> You know, he doesn't he, he doesn't know how to take advice on when to watch movies or what to watch. Yeah, but he's cool. He's cool. He's always watching some. So that's cool. So. As you know, this is February. Valentine's month, month of love, romance, lust, will you name it? So I wanted to do a whole month of just reviewing like. Stuff, stuff that deals with like love, you know, shit like that. So why not do little Nikki? You know, it's it's a little bit on the. On the raunchy comedy side, it came out in, came out in the year 2000, partially written by Adam Sandler. It wasn't fully written by him? No, nah, he, um, he shared his writing role with two other folks, which are named Stephen Brill, who's the director of the film, and Tim Hurley. So this movie takes me back, man. It came out in 2000. I was 10. We were 10 years old, probably. I went to watch this movie in theaters. That's when I actually enjoyed it. And I remember this was a memorable. <clears throat> it is a good movie because it's, it's a movie I love. So, you know, the month of love, why not review this movie? But I remember watching this movie exactly when I went. I went to Universal City Walk. I went there with my dad and he he took. It's a my, good theater. He took my cousins. Like, you know, when you get to take your cousins with you and it's like. You're like, oh man, we're all here together. It's like four, it's like five of you guys, and you guys are all there, and you're all watching the movie, and then like the oldest cousin is there, and you know, you, everybody looks up to him and shit, and everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, and we all chose that movie, and I remember just coming out of that movie, we we're all talking about it, just having such a, uh, I was such a good time, you know, how we, uh, you know, how how great time we had, you know. And it was, I do remember, it was, I remember it like not in detail so much, but I remember watching it and then buying the DVD and watching. Yeah, with my dad, you know what I mean, stuff like that. I don't remember if I saw it in theaters. Or... I like to say that I did, but I'm I just don't remember. But I know for sure I saw it like on cable, definitely on DVD, and I guess when I was watching that movie, it was a time where like I was still playing with toys, but not as much. I w- started getting into other shit. It was more like uh, a collecting. I know what you mean. It was more like. I still buy toys, but I'm I'm it's from collecting now. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's like I don't play with these wrestling toys; they just they stand there and pose. Yeah, I did the Gundam shit for sure. Yeah, Dude, that's that that's the one toy I hated. It's not because I hated Gundam; it's because it was so tedious, and I just I I was I played rough. Yeah, it does take a while, and yeah, I try playing with them, but you gotta be like really careful and shit, cause yeah. like you you can break whatever, you know. Yeah, when I saw that movie. Little Nicky. There's some stuff that I got, but I know there was a lot of stuff that I just didn't fucking understand. I just know that good versus evil. This guy's got to practically save the world. Not only that, he has a girlfriend. And yeah, that's all I could really remember as a kid. I think that's the reason I, I, I agree with you on that. I think that's a big reason why it um it became pro- it, it became progressively funny in my life. Every time I saw it, because I saw this movie every like one at first, it was like every like three years, you know what I mean? Or after it came out and then it became more 
relatively available in cable and you know they bought licensing in different ch channels before streaming and you'd see it here and there and i think that as you grew up because we saw it when, it, when we were 10 so every year you learn a little bit more so you started getting the sex jokes later you started getting the fucking dark humor though when you got older like and then it I think through yeah through different phases i think that's why it hits different every time for me i remember laughing it's certain parts when when I mentioned that, I was like, yo, that shit. There's this part in the movie where Tiny Lester, a R.I.P., fucking tells the tells the the dad like, dad, this is bullshit. And I remember looking at this and like, it was kind of like you know when the the I did it boy. I mean, I didn't do it boy. This is last show Bart. And then the guy's like, eh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like that. I was like, it didn't it didn't tickle me no more, bro. Yeah. But I remember at some point. That was the highlight of the funniest part for me. Like, I start crying and laughing at how much it was. And now it's a bit different. So I guess it hits different with, with age, man. Yeah, and not only that, when you look at that movie, you can straight out tell what was popping at that time, you know? Or you can, there was so much culture in there, you know? Especially with, with like, with the music. Like, whatever was going on in that film, music-wise, was just, like, what was happening in that very year alone and maybe the year behind it. I don't know what the fuck happened with Hollywood or whoever the fuck is, is out there hiring for music director and all this shit. But somewhere along the line, you guys all turned into a big crock of fucking shit because they used to fucking they used to fucking have pride. They used to be CDs made for soundtracks. And that's how great these soundtracks were supposed to be. I remember buying the Men in Black soundtrack. I remember buying the Wawa West soundtrack. I remember buying like a couple other fucking soundtracks, bro, because I didn't. There was no iTunes. There was no. There, it wasn't. Those, there was no streaming platform available like the way it was. And if there was, it wasn't like it is, you know, like it is today. So I think that it was a sense of pride that whoever had that job would take in making a badass soundtrack. And I think now it's just a bunch of fucking shit. Like it's all a bunch of fucking indie fucking assholes. Nobody fucking knows, and they and the fucking director thinks that it's gonna be like maybe if I give them a chance, they're gonna research this and they're gonna become a secret hit overnight. No, put your money into something that's timeless and buy the licensing. Stop being a fucking cheapskate and make these fucking soundtracks great again. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> fucking a. Yeah, fucking Adam Sandler, dude. Like. Or rather, Happy Madison production. They, he's the you, king of that. You, you can tell, honestly, like, you can tell when you're watching an, a fucking Happy Madison. Production. Anytime I hear, just based the, on that ensemble cast, dude. Anytime I hear that song, the "You Spin Me Right Round right, Round," right, right, that's it. Yeah. I think the wedding singer's on. Yeah. Yeah. Is there somebody get that baby so close. Yeah. yeah like somebody goes, and that just that fucking production. That's probably one of my favorite production companies. Up until that fucking movie, that cartoon movie about J the Jewish fools, you know what I mean? Hey, no, no disrespect to the Jewish. Hey, the, crazy nights. Hey, crazy that nights. One? You and didn't the, like that one? The, 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 the fucking dogs like this. Oh, fucking yeah, hated yeah, that yeah, motherfucker, yeah. dude. Oh man, fucking hated that shit. I don't disrespect to my fucking Hebrews out there, but but you know it's it's not that, that I, shit was tough, bro. It, it was just tough. I'm like, it was a tough sell. Do you think he knows it, dude? When he's doing it, like. Like oh, he yeah, knows like he's you, doing you, it too much. You don't think that he knows the last fucking movie he made on Netflix with the Halloween one was a big fucking pile of shit where he fucking talks like this. <laughs> yeah, like, but why do you talk like that, bro? Like, it's cool for a little bit, but and I'm, I, I can admit it when somebody who I think is great, like Adam Sandler, is not doing it for me anymore. That doesn't make it bad. It's just not, it's not for me anymore. He's, a, he's moved on to the next generation. Yeah. Or the... Next two generations, really. Kids. Yeah, kids. Kids laugh at some stupid shit these days. <laughs> hey, yo, even though this, this movie is rated PG-13, would you let your kid watch it? Say you had a kid who's like 10 or 11. If that motherfucker has an iPad or a fucking uh, a phone at that point, yeah. I'm not saying. I'm, he's in no danger of me exposing him to anything that's going to be shocking. To Tithead. Yeah. If he has that fucking phone. Fucking sticking a pineapple into Hitler's Satan's ass? fucking asshole. No, Hitler's ass. Oh, Hitler. My bad. Yeah, Hitler's asshole. Uh, you know what? I, that wouldn't be a bad way to present history. He'd be like, if he were to ask me, Dad, why, why, 
Why did that guy get a pineapple up his ass? Be like, well, he killed about fucking 40, 40 I don't know, what is it, 4 million He killed million the people Jews. who made this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro, he, he killed about 4 million Jews, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> a pineapple up his ass is the least of fucking things. So, I mean, it'd be a cool way to have those history bonding moments. I think anybody could laugh at it. Yeah. I think that's the, this the beauty of, of films like this, bro. Like, like, they would hide certain things before this fucking bullshit ass cancel culture and people couldn't take a fucking joke. You know what I mean? Like, people couldn't take a fucking joke. But I, I mean, people could take a joke before, but, like, they would be able to pull off these moments of uh, moral fucking, I, I don't know, this, this the more, I guess this, these moments of, of uh, memorable Kodak moments, per se. And they were present. They were be able to be. Pre- they were able to be presented because there was nobody to complain about this shit. Yeah, there was shit in here. There was sexist. There was shit in there. There was like, what was the most sexist thing? The the the, the most trigger thing that I think would have got this shit canceled is the fucking good luck with the nipple. Oh, that thing. guy. See? Yeah, yeah. The fucking the hotel on the fucking. He's, he's like Valerie Swan. The one that talks like Aton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like two floors up. <laughs> Yeah, but there's some folks poor fuck just like that, dude. Yeah, no, there's people in and, and, straight up. And I'm not saying like, and this is not to say like, oh man, they're fucking they're like fuck those fools. I was like, no, th- we know there's people like that. Just how we knew at that time there was people now on that Especially level. Especially in New York, dude. Not on that level at that time. I knew that about gay people like that, but I knew that if it was on TV and that was a representation, they had got to have seen it at some point. So there had, you yeah. know what I mean. Everything's inspired by some by some kind of a reality in a sense, bro. And if it, and if it wasn't that open during that time, and that was, I'm not saying it's a good representation, but I'm also not saying I'm not gonna put my money and say that there wasn't fools out there that are fucking putting pouring hot wax on themselves like that. Yeah, with those fucking weird ass pictures in the back. <laughs> that. Yeah, all that shit, man. And then what's up with the fucking weed costing five hundred dollars an ounce, bro? Back in two thousand. Oh no, that's Ooh, there. Hey. We got to ask Cali Blaze, dude. They were fucking taxing fucking, uh, the, 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 what is it? Fucking Green Thumb Dispensary prices, bro. <laughs> like, Damn. nah, Green Thumb Dispensary prices, like, what, like $350? Like, or sometimes, like, would tax, depending on the most expensive one, I would say. So it's like anywhere from $3 to $350. So it's a little bit off. You're getting a little bit better deal, but like. But that's 2000 Yeah. The year 2000 or 99, whatever. 2000 like, you're getting, like, the only few people still had that real OG. And. It, and what they have then, dude? They the OG Diesel? was around. No, oh, the OG around? was around. Right. Fuck yeah, that was like the times where it was getting introduced. Right on. You have to put the weed in that fucking movie, man. Even at that time, dude. We're with it. Yeah, man. Characters were with it. I mean, yeah. They, Pop they, brownie. Like, all that shit. I mean, I, I think it's hey. like stuff that, like, all those jokes, man. Like, there was drug, there was drug jokes being used there. Nobody... Com- Excuse me. Nobody fucking complained about that shit, you know. Homosexual jokes. Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of gay there jokes. Was a lot of it. Yeah, and it was. And it was hilarious. <laughs> no, it was, man. <laughs> I mean, you know what's crazy? I don't. I don't. As I, messed I, up as it could. I don't think that you can have those moments anymore in in, no. in in movies. You know, you can't have those. You can't make a movie like Doctor. No, sorry. Um, the the Nutty Professor. You know no. what I mean. You cannot have a movie like that no more. All the fat fools will start crying. I never started crying in that movie, dog. I was fat. I'm fat. What do you want me to fucking do? Remember, like, King of the Hill? So Bobby Hill's fat. <laughs> Remember, he's like, I'm he's also funny. Fun. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's like, but like, kids these days, bro, they, they, they start crying and all that shit. I'm like, bro, bro like, lose some weight then. The fuck, right. dude? Like, fix the fucking problem. I'm not right. going to cry over something that, like, I have the power to control or change. If I was stuck with it, bro, like, if I was, like, like, damn, fool, something's, I was, I don't know, something, a disadvantage of some kind, then I'd probably, I'd have a little bit harder time dealing with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes well, I gotta look where to put these words together, bro, because I forget this, those people listening. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> listening. It's nah, all good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what do you think of, well, there's a love story in this movie, yeah. you know? It's... I mean, when you look at it, even though it's a comedy, it is a life or death thing, you know? And it's pretty interesting to see how they could put romance in, in a movie like that when it's really about, like, saving, like, 
your dad's legacy and shit. But much more than that, you know, you're saving the existence of life as we know it. And they still were able to put romance. Even as like cheesy romance like this, like this movie, because it is cheesy romance, you know, yeah. it didn't take them too long to like to fall for each other to the point where like they're flying together and shit. Yeah. It's like very, very Aladdin shit. Yeah, it is Aladdin shit yeah. or Peter Pan, whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that that's that that's like, a, I guess. Another beautiful thing to to the art of making a great movie or a film, you know? Like, there's so many twists and turns in this story. And you know what the main objective is in the beginning. Obviously, the reason he's out there. But obviously, it's, it's also is as, as fiction as it may seem, you also, when you watch these films, you think about, you're like, man, what would you do if you were in that position? I think about these things. It's, fucking, it's not just because I'm high. I wasn't smoking weed at 10 years old. But I thought about it. I was like, imagine if you had to do that. You know what I mean? Like you think about this, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess I would find a girlfriend." You know what I mean? Like, imagine drowning. Yeah, dr- <laughs> like die. Just, yeah, like stuff like that. You think about it, and uh, I guess it it, it that re- it, it adds a sense of relatability because if you're if you're out if you're gonna be going out there to the human world because he wasn't in love in hell, there was no no opportunity of that. He only experienced misery. Yeah, he only experienced like really. Yeah, even he, though he's in hell. His face is fucked up. Yeah. His brothers are fucking him up. And then even at the end, you're reminded of that. There's like, oh, there's no butterflies here. You got to go up there. And I think that it's like, it, it provides the thing. It's like it's a beautiful part of being human. And it, and that was placed in there because of the relatability of that. You're very we're all vulnerable to these these type of experiences, whether it's love, whether it's pain, whether it's all that. We all experience it. And, and that appeal presented in in, in a way that. Like, I guess in the way that it's directed, like in this film, for people who appreciate it, like me, like I, I saw, I get it. I'm like, yeah, it's like you're going, you're in the human world. You're going to experience these things. The more and more you explore, you're going to find somebody you like. You're going to find somebody you're going to, you're going to have some conversations with. You're going to find somebody you kick it with. You're going to find friends, you know? Right. It's a part of the human experience. And it, uh, he was out there, a half human. And part of that human experience <laughs> is, um, it's funny because, I mean, I've seen this movie a lot of times since I've seen it for the first time. And every time I watch it, I do always try to, like, find something new in the movie. And what I found in this viewing in particular is the fact that it shows how, um, like, like, owning who you are, you know? Cause like even though it's a it's a comedy and like they're always like bashing on, you know how like those two dudes bash on that fucking on that, on that roommate yeah. <laughs> on that Aton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that cool was like he was with himself. Like he was yeah. like, yo, well, fuck you, man. I like theater. So what? Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna be a big fucking star, dude. He didn't. He fuck. owned it. You know. And Nicky, he didn't really have an identity, and he found out. You know, he found out where he could live, and basically know who he is and based and wanting to share that, you know, like finding it. Sh- yeah. In a sense, he found himself yeah, weird. He, he found himself, even though he was foreign to the world. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. I mean that, that there is that, there is that aspect that uh, once again, it's one of those things that you don't see and see it in a lot of people where there is that certain group of people that take pride in saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself and not, I'm I'm comfortable with myself because this is the first time you've ever had that opportunity to be that, but, or to, to feel that comfortable, you know what I mean? Because you wanted other people's validations, but to all those other people out there that have always been comfortable in your own skin like that, you do hold it down like that, like that theater fool, because you're like, yeah, fool. So what fool? Like I like catching Pokemon and I also like shooting guns. I know I'm unique. You know what I mean? <laughs> like even the nipple dudes yeah. knew who that fool was. He was yeah, like, this is who I am, dog. He's like, yeah, like he's over as there getting rubbed down by the seen. hairy ass fool. Yeah. Yeah. Even the tit head guy, he knew who he was. Like, you know what? I like these type. Yeah. <laughs> I like hairy fucking monsters. So what? Rodney Dangerfield, dog. Legend. Even he has like some fucking weird little fucking tendencies and shit. And it's shown. The, it's the, crazy. 
the cat. Well, yeah, you know. Well, I mean, that fits perfect for like his style and like what his content. Even though how you don't get. Yeah, they the the fucking casting on this on this movie. Huge. And, you know, usually when they fucking have these like a cast, and it wasn't like all those big names had a big role because that's it, the more you the more you want them to have a role, the more expensive it is. Mm-hmm. But. Usually it's a hit or miss when it comes to these films. When they have a cast this big, cast this big. Remember Once Upon a Time in Mexico? Trash. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big cast. A big ass cast. You thought everybody was gonna? I'm like, yo, Enrique Glesh is in here. What the fuck, bro? Dude, Sheech Marine. I don't even want to get started yeah. on that fool in that movie. So Man. just so all so you have these movies that have tremendous cast, like that other one, The Kingsman Bodyguard or whatever with Samuel L. Oh, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Fucking garbage ass movie, but like. It's a hit or miss, but this is one of these movies that has that very much like the 40 year old version where you catch a lot of these people and either uh, either times in their lives where that's it. That's the last time you see them. And, and it's probably some of their great work or you see you you have that taste of you're like, yo, remember this shit, the all star cast. And you you're like, you're never going to see these fools working at that level again. No. You know, like I said, like movies like this and the 40 year old version. Never going to see Seth Rogen, Steve Carell, the black fool. I forget his name. Montel. <laughs> Tell me Montel. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, and um, yeah. It, Bell oh, Run. Yeah. And that <laughs> other fool. What is it? Working like Ant-Man. Yeah. Ant-Man working together. Look, Ant-Man would not fucking sit down. He's made Marvel money now, bro. Imagine that. Fuck, that's Ant. You see, this is you're watching Ant Man, dude. You're watching Boner Jams 03 fucking I know, out dude. there, bro. Watching a fucking pervert, sad, lonely bastard. <laughs> it's like, I want to go to Paris. <laughs> I want to make love with, <laughs> make love to you under the fucking please, yeah. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> you remember that one time you cried? The like, please stop reminiscing. Oh yeah, and fucking Mindy. From, Mindy uh, Kaling, uh, dude. Oh, what's her name? What was her name in the office? Kelly. Oh. Kelly, yeah, Kelly Kapoor. Kelly Kapoor. This is dark Kelly too, because yeah, now dark you, Kelly. Got, you got fucking light Kelly. That's that's fucking Kelly with like no body modifications of any kind. Yeah, she looks bonable you know? now. Not that I'm saying she wasn't, but she she just wasn't America's cup of tea, according to her. She had her bleachers off. I'm like, bitch, you. What do you think got what you the job? It's what it appears to be. What do you think got you the job, bitch? <laughs> She's a good writer, though. Oh, she, yeah, she produces. She yeah. does produce a lot of shows. Izan, I want to thank you for being in my podcast once again. Yeah, man. Little Nicky's fun. I'm gonna keep on watching it as the years come by. Share it. You got any shout outs? Yeah, shout out to everybody uh, listening to this podcast. Make sure you leave a rate and review. Follow my new page, Flavors by Ezone. Um, not trying to get deleted on that one. So I'm trying to get to 10k. So I can start reporting Cairo's page. No, I'm just playing. Uh, no, but let me uh, get me to 10K flavor, uh, flavors by Ezo with two S's. And also to check out my merch and everything that I got. In regards to my business ventures and merch that I got stuff for sale, go to highandhungry.shop. Flavors by Ezone.com. This is a little something. This, oh, what, what was that Macy's thing? There's always something there to excite me. There you go. That's, that my, w- that's my website right there for nice. y'all. <laughs> All righty. I'm Ray Salazar. Follow me at Morning Shot Films, IG, YouTube. Follow the Morning Reel on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever it's called. Google Podcasts. I'm I'm waiting for iHeart, man. Come on, iHeart. Hurry the hell up. Get me in there. And YouTube as well. Um, I take requests. Requests are email to officialmorningreel at gmail.com. Do not forget to rate and review. And if you like this shit, fucking follow me. And I'll follow right back.